Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, and I'm Metagang here, and today we're going to go ahead and break down the new expansion rules, which are 22 inches by 22 inches. This came out through two sources. Uh, the first one is the Head Referee Training Course, which I completed earlier today. I think that came out yesterday, and that had a question, what, what was the horizontal expansion, and its robots cannot expand beyond a horizontal area of 22 inches by 22 inches during any point of the match. So that kind of reveals that it's there. And then also in the inspection checklist, it says robots do not expand larger than 22 inches by 22 inches. And we already knew the 22 inches height wise. Um, that's SG3. That hasn't changed. So while these aren't officially in the game manual yet, it's pretty obvious that the GDC is planning to change it to this because in two supplementary sources, the inspection checklist and the head referee certification training, this is what they've made it. So I think we can pretty clearly understand what they're going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and break down the implications of this and why it's actually just worse. Because while 22 inches point to point is restrictive, it is at least very easy to enforce. And this is practically possibly enforceable. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm. And let's go ahead and get into it. So you might be thinking, okay, 22 inches. Also, by the way, all this is done in Fusion 360, um, just as sketches. So you can see 22 inches by 22 inches. Okay, so if your robot starts as an 18 by 18, um, you can go out maybe 4 inches to the front, 2 inches to the side, or maybe you could go out like 4 inches to the front, 4 inches left. And that seems pretty simple. Uh, you might look at that and be like, okay, expansion seems pretty simple. We can expand roughly 4 inches out the front and 4 inches out to the side. All seems good. However, it can start to get more complicated. For example, I will ask you, is this robot in size? It's got like one little stick going out one direction and one going another direction. And you can't do like point to point of like 22 Pythagorean theorem, whatever that would be. Yeah, the diagonal of a 22 inch triangle would be 31 inches roughly. But you can't do Pythagorean theorem here just because those aren't perfectly opposite because it's not 45 degrees. So you can't just measure point to point. So is this robot in size? And the answer is yes. It's not intuitive, but when you put the CAD drawing down, you can see that it does all fit in size. So this would be pretty easy if you had a 22 inch sizing tool, you just line it up this way, be like, okay, there to there, that looks like it's about 21.5 inches. And then that one is 22, that's probably closer to maybe 21 inches. So it all fits in size, all looks good. However, it would still be kind of hard to eyeball it because if you're putting your meter stick or whatever down like that, you are, you'd have to have something else, probably another meter stick going out that's like perpendicular to it, but this is definitely still manageable. And this is manageable, but it's not really an issue. It's just a little bit complicated. And again, you're going to be measuring these all during inspection, all these different configurations. So at this point in time, it's fairly easy. But when we start getting into mid-match, like if you have multiple of these, or what if this can go out three inches and you can't have both of them fully extended? How... If this goes out three inches, like what's the maximum amount I can expand this without that going all the way out? There's no really easy way to figure that out, which is kind of part of the difficulty here. Now I'm going to ask you, is this robot in size? It's 10 inches wide, 15 inches long, and then it's going to expand out 10 inches. And you're probably looking at this and going, Evan, you're crazy. This is 25 inches long. It's not in size, um, but it is in size because we can put the 22 inches diagonally. And as you can see, this does fit in a 22 inch by 22 inch area. So there, it's not like you can just expand out to 22 inches. Like this is 25 inches and like 10 inch robots are real. That's legit. I've built 10 inch wide robots before. So it get like the expansion depends on how wide your robot is. So it gets really weird here. Um, and like moving on, this guy is not in size. He still expands out 10 inches, but since it's off to the side right there, you would see like if we move that over, that's going to be out of size. But like you could still expand out past 22 inches if you just had it rotated normally. So it's kind of weird to think about. And this honestly isn't even the worst. Uh, there are some weird scenarios later on. Like this is nice. This is a 45 degree angles right there because that is just even 45 degrees. But if this was offset, figuring out like as you rotate this entire square around, so not be 45 degrees, but not zero, the optimal angle is somewhere in there. So like inspectors would have to be going through and trying to figure all this out with a 22 inch size limit. And it's in two dimensions. So it's really, really hard to measure. And then again, if you have, you can expand out the side here some amount, but as we move this, that's going to change. So like, and even then, if we rotate it, like if no expansion out the front at all and just expansion out the side, you could easily go out 12 inches. Obviously, you cannot go out 12 inches in this current configuration. So, like, 
it gets really complicated mid-match trying to figure out which robots are in size and which ones aren't. Because you can't just... And there's no intuitive way to figure it out. You have to try and fit the sizing through tool in different ways, which I'll kind of get to in a bit more later. So, like, it's not at all intuitive. And circular expansion, like, what are the alternatives that I propose if rectangular expansion sucks? Uh, circular expansion also sucks. Uh, don't do that. Here we can have a 36-inch circle, which is what in-the-zone expansion used to be. Um, however, this robot... It's 31.177 is your limit horizontally on a triangle. That's not at all intuitive. And like here we can go, you can still expand nine inches out the back, but only kind of. The only way to figure out like circular expansion is if you actually have a circular sizing tool, which obviously you're not going to have. And even then, you could make it, okay, well, what if I want a length longer than 31.17 inches? You can make that 32 inches, but now this can't be an equilateral triangle. And instead of expanding 9 inches out the back, you can only do 7.55. And these are really easy to figure out in CAD, but like in real life, you can't figure these things out anywhere near as easily. And CAD just, you can't do CAD for inspection. So it's really, really hard to measure. And like comparison, here's rectangular expansion. This shape is terrible. I don't know, like... This isn't obviously going to fit in a 24 by 24, but like I tried to figure out what's the smallest shape that I could get it in. And like here's for circle, uh, I was able to just do a three point circle there, there and there. You can't do this in real life because you're not going to know that the center of rotation is right there unless you already know the dimensions of it. And 34 inches seems to be like the best for this shape here, circular. And I'm fairly confident in that. But again, in real life, you're not going to know. The computer does some fancy math to figure that point out. And you can't expect the inspectors to do a bunch of math to figure out if your robot's legal. So like that shape, circle, most efficient, 34.2. Then for rectangle, um, I just kind of fit it on as like a 28 by 23. And that seemed to fit. And I tried doing a bunch of different diagonal shapes, like you can kind of see here, but that just ended up making it bigger. I'm honestly not sure if this 28.6 by 23.6 is the most efficient. I don't know. And I feel like that makes the expansion rules terrible that I don't know if this is the most efficient size constraint. Like that just seems terrible. Like circular is at least if you find the center of rotation, you can rotate around. But this is just this is even worse. Like I spent far too long um, based off of what I should have trying to just see like my own puzzle, like what's the most efficient way to fit this in. And then I propose point to point is the best way to do it because you just get a meter stick and you just put one end there and put one end there and you see how far they are. And you instantly know, oh, this robot at maximum expansion is 34.2 inches. Maybe you thought it was down there. Oh, well, that's only 31. So point-to-point -point is the best. I highly recommend that the GTC swap over to point-to-point -point expansion. It's what being, what's been done in the past. Tipping point was 36-inch point-to-point expansion. And I think over-under also used this expansion. It's simple. It's easy to measure. You can just do it with a meter stick. It doesn't require, like, trying to figure out, like, the center of a circle and rotating around it. Or even worse, like, having to go through and, like, rotate the robot in order to make it fit through expansion. Like, just make it easy where we can just stick a point there, stick a point there, see if it's legal. Like that's so much easier to do, especially mid-match. You can just expand the robot out and check. That's kind of all that I have for today. I just kind of wanted to break down the new expansion rules as obviously those are going to be important to anyone who's trying to build their robot and hopefully try and convince the GDC that their current rules suck and are even worse from a rule point understanding. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm, and I will see you in the next one.